I'm Anthony Gettig, NAVOX, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build one of the simplest HF antennas there is to build, the trusty old dipole. Now, my configuration is going to be more of a, um, what we call an inverted V, just because of where I need to put it, and you'll see that when we go outside to put it up, but really, uh, I'm going to be using one of these things. I got this at r &L. It's just a uh, very simple um, coax goes in here, and then... Wires go on either side, there you go. And then I'm also gonna use for the wire, I picked this up at Walmart today, super cheap speaker wire. I think this was like 15 bucks for 50 feet. So let's get started on the build. Okay, so what do we have here? We have our speaker wire, cheapo speaker wire. <clears throat> we have our uh, ballon thingy here, which I had to take apart, and I assure you it's no longer weatherproofed. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. For my purposes, uh, for this, it'll be fine where I'm going to put it. <clears throat> so, got this. I had to tighten up these on the inside and just, yeah. Anyways, uh, these are pretty inexpensive. I think I got this at r and for, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, nuts that go on top of there. Got like, some ring terminals here. Crimper. We're gonna need a couple of these dog bone things outside. So first thing we wanna do is uh, cut our wire to length and then attach them to here. So let's do that first. Okay, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a new web browser and I'm just going to search Google for um, dipole calculator. There we go. And move that out of the way. Let's see here. I've looked at a few of these uh, before. The West Mountain Radio one is pretty straightforward. So let's go to that one. And the frequency I want, because I want to do this for 30 meters FT8. That's really the only reason I'm setting this up is to be able to do 30 meter FT8. <laughs> and I know that that's going to be at 10.136 megahertz. So I'll go ahead and hit calculate. And there we go. There's our measurements. That's what we need. We need to uh, jot that down. And uh, if you want to make that into metric, you can, you know, easily do that. There's actually other um, calculators out there that'll put it out in metric if you want, but this is fine for me. So the total length is going to be 46 feet, 2 inches. Each leg is going to be 23 feet, 1.1 inches. All right, hey, let's get to work. Okay, so I went ahead and cut that to 23 feet, 1 point, and then a little bit more, uh, about 1.2 inches, roughly. Uh, actually, about two, 23 feet, 2 inches. There we go. <laughs> now, cool thing with this speaker wire, you know, it may not be the best for a permanent install, but uh, it's going to get me on the air, and that's what you want to do is get on the air, right? Cool thing is about this, I cut it to the right length, and when I split it in half, I have my two wires for the dipole. Let's do that right now. And there we go through the magic of editing. It's all done. So now, what I want to do is strip these ends and put the... Uh, Ring terminals on. And ta-da! Again, through the magic of editing, we have our terminals on. I didn't want to bore you with that. So now what we're going to do is actually put one of these on each post. And we'll pick that up in a minute. Um, again, I had to take this apart and tighten things up a bit, but get that on there and then maybe take some needle nose or the right wrench spanner, if you will, uh, and just tighten that a little bit. A little bit snug, not 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 over, not overly, because this is going to go outside. There we go. And now this wire goes there. That wire goes there. I should have shown you the inside of this, because you would see that the center conductor goes to one corner, and then another wire goes to the uh, outside of the um, SO239. And you're probably wondering what's the twine for. Eh, you'll see that in a minute. Okay, we got around the uh, trusty. Old MFJ antenna analyzer. See our frequency. Let's bring that down to 10.136 or thereabouts. Getting there. Yeah, yeah, right around there. Pretty darn close, guys. There we go. Yeah, it's close enough. So you see, we're at about two, a little better than two, but that is under three to one. And I know that my 7300 can tune that, so let's give it a try. Uh, right now I'm on the DX Commander, which does not have an element for 30 meters. Now watch this, I'm gonna switch over to this homemade antenna, Schneike. Holy cow, you look at that noise floor. That's kind of crazy. And it's actually, yeah, it's about, it's 
Pat S9. <laughs> so let's go off frequency a little bit here and see if we can tune this baby. Here we go. All right, it says it's tuned. Let's uh, try this, the SWR meter on here. Hey, hey, I'm okay with that. That's pretty low, <laughs> even though we have a lot of noise. So let's uh, put this back up here for WSJTX and we'll give that a try now. Okay, I've got uh, WSJTX fired up here. We are on 30 meters. Let's see if we can uh, reach someone. Here's a nice strong signal. Yep, and things are looking good so far. Hey, there we go. <laughs> uh, plus 15, wow, that is a strong signal. And yes, I'm pushing the uh, 100 watts. So, cool, well that works. Looks like we got ourselves a winner here. Let's finish up this contact and then let's head outside. There we go, good deal. We will save that and hey, let's head outside and see it actually deployed. Okay, so here we are, we are outside and the antenna is deployed. And uh, I'll let Kathy show you here. Well, we have going up from the uh, second floor window, going down either side, is uh, an inverted V. Of course, you got the coax coming down right there through the middle. Up at the top, you see the uh, little ballon thingy there. And then, uh, Kathy, come on over here. You see, all I did was just put this, tied this up to these little dog bone things here, a little bit of paracord, and I got these, these things were like two or three bucks at uh, Tractor Supply. Got them on each side. And this goes up and down and over. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we've got 30 meter inverted V dipole and really just one wire goes to the uh, center conductor of the coax, the other wire goes to the, um, to the uh, jacket of it. And believe it or not, it works. Two to one SWR, which is not perfect. Um, if I'd have paid a little closer attention to the length I was cutting everything, because I, I had to use some of the wire to tie onto the dog bone, maybe be a little different. But you know what? I uh, 2.0 to, to one match. I can uh, I can work with that with my tuner and get a get a, get a good match. So there you go. What have we done? We built an inverted V dipole for 30 meters. I knew the frequency. Cut the wire the way I wanted it to. Probably could have done a better job cutting it. But you know what? Two to one, I'm okay with that. I can tune it, as you saw, I can tune it with the tuner. And I'm back on 30 meters. And so, so why did I even do this? Well, when I, when I made my DX Commander, uh, when I took the 30 meter element off and added 80 meters, well, I kind of missed 30 meters. <laughs> and I'm only ever gonna use the FT8 frequency, most likely. But uh, even so, I'm sure this would work for other stuff as well. The point I wanna make with this video is this is a very easy, if not the easiest antenna to make yourself and to deploy a very simple dipole. I have it set up in an inverted V configuration just because of the way my house is, but if I get the other ends up, I sure would. Anyways, I say that to say this, and Elmer told me once, if it will radiate, you can communicate. It may not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it's gonna get me on the air on the band that I wanna get on. Whatever it takes to get on the air. So until next time, I'm Anthony, NAVOX. Take care, God bless, 73.